It all comes down to this. Petit Le Mans signals the end of yet another IMSA season, but there are still championships to be decided. And while some of these championships may appear to be wrapped up, we've seen some wild races here in recent years, and I believe that anything could be possible. We're gonna kick things off with a championship battle that's been really fun to watch this year in IMSA, and that's in the GTP class. Here, we've now seen all four manufacturers win a race in 2024, but at the top of the standings, it's the number seven Porsche Penske Motorsports 963 who lead with 2,650 points. That's a 124 point advantage over the number six Porsche Penske Motorsports entry, and 164 points ahead of the 01 Cadillac. That's an important number, which we'll talk about in a second. Second. Rounding at the top five are the number 31 Wheel and Engineering Cadillac and the number 40 Wayne Taylor Racing Acura. Now looking at these championship standings, you'll notice the 124 point gap separating the two Porsches, which is a fairly significant number. However, the more important number in my opinion is that 164 point gap back to the 01 Cadillac. You see, this is important because technically the 01 Cadillac is not completely eliminated from the championship fight. The maximum number of points that a team can walk away from Petit Le Mans with in this race is 385. With 11 cars being entered in the GTP class, that means the minimum number of points that you can walk away with, qualifying and race points included, is 220 points. So that is a 165 point swing that's potentially there at Petit Le Mans. Cadillac is 164 points behind the number seven Porsche. So while this is an extreme long shot, if we were to see the 01 Cadillac go out, get pole and win the race, and we see the number seven Porsche start and finish last, then technically the championship is still in play for the 01. Again, it's an extreme long shot, but technically it's possible. With that being said though, that means that qualifying is going to be a deciding factor in the championship here. If we see the number seven Porsche Penske Motorsports 963 qualify ninth or better, that means that one of the Porsches will be winning the GTP class championship this year. Whether that would be the number seven or the number six would still have to be played out in the race. But even if things do go completely sideways in qualifying for the number seven Porsche, as long as they finish sixth or better in the race, then they will wrap up the GTP championship. In the Constructors' Championship for the GTP class, well, as long as Porsche starts the race, then they will clinch that Constructors' Championship as well. Looking at LMP2, they are still our closest championship fight here, even after an Indianapolis round that saw the very, very tight nature of the championship get spread out a little bit. Here, it's the number 52 Inter Europol by PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry that leads with 1,919 points. That's a 98-point advantage over the number 74 Riley. The number 18 Era Motorsports entry is still mathematically in it, while the number 11 TDS Racing entry and the number 2 United Autosports round out the top 5. Now, I said that this is the closest championship that we have out there. Regardless of what happens over the course of this weekend, regardless of what happens in qualifying, if the number 52 finishes in the top 4 in the race, then they will clinch the championship. However, a top four finish in a class as competitive as LMP2 is absolutely not a given. And it's realistic that we could see the 74 charge back here and make a run at the 52 for the championship. So how could this reasonably happen? Well, for starters, it's going to be absolutely critical for the number 74 Riley to out-qualify the number 52 entry. You see, if the points gap that currently sits at 98 points grows to even two points more and, and gets to that 100 point gap, that essentially is another position worth of wiggle room for the 52 in the race. Also, the 52 owns the tiebreaker at the end of it all with the number 74, so it's critical in qualifying for the 74 to out-qualify the 52. They don't have to out-qualify them and you know sit on pole or anything like that, but just stay ahead of them don't let that 98 point gap grow any larger, and that's gonna make it a little bit easier in the race to try and reel in the championship. I also think that it's absolutely critical here that the number 74 wins the race. Sure, it's possible that the 74 could go out there and you know finish second and still have a mathematical chance at winning the championship, but essentially that means that the number 52 has to finish ninth or 10th in the 10 car class. If after qualifying the number 74 can 
keep that gap to under 100 points, like I just mentioned, then that means in order for the 52 to clinch the championship, they would have to finish fifth or better. And if we see some interesting things happen in qualifying and say the 74 sits on pole and the 52 has a difficult qualifying effort, that could push the envelope even more to them needing a fourth place finisher better to wrap up the championship. Again, lots of this is rooted in the 74 winning the race. And again, that's why I think it's absolutely essential that the 74 goes out and wins. But the point that I'm trying to make here is there's a mathematical shot and we know that the 74 is strong. They haven't broken through for their first win of the season yet, but they've been close and you could feel one coming here at Road Atlanta. The other championship to play for here in the LMP2 class is the Jim Truman Award, which awards an automatic Le Mans entry for the following season for the best rated bronze driver. Of course, since LMP2 has a bronze mandate in it, all of the drivers are eligible. But here, if the 52 finishes fourth or better, then Nick Brule will beat out Gar Robinson for that Jim Truman Award. And that birth at Le Mans. In GTD Pro, it's almost as close as the LMP2 battle here, but there's a few more cars in the class, which make things a little bit more interesting. Here, the 77 AO Racing Porsche of Rexy leads with 2,887 points. That's a 99 point advantage over the number 23 heart of racing Aston Martin. The number one Paul Miller Racing BMW sits in third in front of the number 14 Bassa Sullivan Lexus and the number three Corvette Racing by Pratt Miller Motorsports Corvette. Now again, regardless of what happens here in qualifying, if Rexy goes out and finishes in the top four in the race, they will win the championship. And I mean, even if they go out and if they qualify very close to the number 23, then that likely means it's just a top five that they would need to walk away with the championship. However, the 13 cars entered in this GTD Pro class opens up some more possibilities than we saw in the LMP2 class. For starters, we know that qualifying has kind of been all over the place here in GTD Pro. The two championship contenders, the number 77 and the number 23, have had some really good qualifying runs. They've also had some really poor qualifying runs. In some instances, they've been moved to the back of the class after their qualifying runs, so qualifying could very well have a part to play in this championship fight. However, like it was in the LMP2 class, it is going to be critical for the number 23 Heart of Racing Aston Martin to out-qualify the number 77 AO Racing Porsche. As soon as you let that championship grow to 100 points or more, it means that Rexy has another position of wiggle room out on track in the race. So it's absolutely critical to keep that gap below 100 points in qualifying. Flipping over to the race, a win isn't a necessity for the 23, but this is virtually must win for them. If the 23 were to go on and win this race and they qualified relatively close to one another, then that would essentially mean that Rexy would need a top five to lock up the championship. Now on the flip side of things, if Rexy were to say have trouble, which is not something that we want to see by any stretch of the imagination, but it is Petit Le Mans after all, there are pretty crazy things that happen in this race. But if Rexy were to say fall to 11th or lower, then all that the 23 would have to do to clinch the championship would be to grab a podium. Needless to say though, given the track records that both of these teams have and how they've been running this season, you can't be counting on that if you're the number 23. This is virtually a must win race for you. And if you're you're Rexy coming into this race, you're just focused on having a solid run, staying out of trouble, and walking away with a top five finish. Looking at the manufacturer's championship in GTD Pro, it's virtually locked up for Porsche at this point with a 122 point lead back to Aston Martin. And then there's GTD, the championship that we've been waiting to wrap up for a while. Here it's the number 57 Windward Racing Mercedes that leads by 222 points over the number 96 Turner Motorsport BMW. The number three Korthoff Preston Motorsports Mercedes is third, 493 points back. The number 78 Forte Racing Lamborghini sits in fourth. And rounding out the top five is the number 34 Conquest Racing Ferrari. Here it's simple. If you're Windward Racing, go out, regardless of what happens in qualifying, get a top 15 in the race, and walk away with your GTD championship. I tried to look at some potentially reasonable scenarios that we could see play out here in GTD. There's nothing really that's all that reasonable. Windward Racing, they essentially have to go out, start the race, get a top 15, it's a 20 car field, and you'll have the GTD championship wrapped up. Also in play in GTD is the Bob Aiken Bronze Cup. Here there's nine entries competing and only the race points count for this championship. There's a 120 point gap here between the leading Ore Fadani in the number 13 AWA Corvette and Brandon Arib in the number 70 Inception Racing Ferrari. 
So factoring in tiebreakers here, that means Fadani needs to finish in eighth of the nine bronze cup drivers competing in order to wrap up this championship and the automatic berth at Le Mans. It's also worth noting here that Mercedes has already clinched the manufacturer's championship with their run back at Indy. And then we have, of course, the Endurance Cup standings, which factors in points from certain points of the races in the Rolex 24, the 12 hours of Sebring, the six hours of the Glen, the six hours at Indy, and of course, the season ending Motul Petit Le Mans. During this race, points are gonna be handed out at the four hour mark, the eight hour mark, and at the race finish. And if you're running in first at one of those marks, you'll get five points. If you're running second in class, you will get four points. Running in third place, you'll get two points and all other classified entries will get two points. In GTP, it's the number seven Porsche Penske Motorsports 963 entry that leads here by eight points over the number zero one Chip Ganassi Racing Cadillac. A pretty healthy lead there for the number seven as that will be a difficult number to overcome for the zero one. However, if we flip things over to the LMP2 standings, then it is much, much closer as the number 52 Inter Europol by PR1 Matheson Motorsports entry also leads this championship, but they are tied with the number 11 TDS Racing entry at 35 points. The number 18 Era Motorsports entry is just two points back with the 04 CrowdStrike Racing entry who unfortunately will not be joining us at Petit Le Mans in fourth and rounding out the top five, the number 74 Riley Motorsports entry. In GTD Pro, this could still be up for grabs with a good run from any one in the top five as the number one Paul Miller Racing BMW leads with 37 points. That's five points ahead of both the Risi Competizione Ferrari and the AO Racing Porsche. In a tie for fourth, we have the number three Corvette Racing by Pratt Miller Motorsports Corvette and the number 64 Ford Multimatic Mustang. And then we have GTD leading here is also the number 57 Windward Racing Mercedes with 35 points, but that's just a single point ahead of the number 70 Inception Racing Ferrari. The number 32 Korthoff Preston Motorsports Mercedes sits in third, four points back. The number 120 Wright Motorsports Porsche is in fourth, six points behind. And rounding out the top five is the number 023 Triarci Competizione Ferrari. Now the championship battles may not be quite as close as they were heading into this race last year, but that's largely down to the chaos that we saw unfold last time out at Indy. You can get caught up on everything that happened in that race right here. Huge shout out to all the channel supporters. If you too want to support the show, you can head to patreon.com slash off the S's. Click that join button below. Once again though, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a great race weekend and doesn't go off in the S's.